She's been a royal commissioner, a judge, and a law reformer. And the rights of women have been at the forefront of her mind for decades. In 1984, she was named as the chair of a Victorian inquiry into prostitution. But back then, the focus wasn't always on her work. Well, you've made front page headlines this afternoon uh, on the, in the Melbourne Herald. Is it an advantage being a woman? I don't think that it's particularly relevant. I think the important thing is that the person who's chosen to do the inquiry have the qualifications to do the job properly, and I think I have those qualifications. Since then, she's helped abolish the partial defence of provocation used by violent men to excuse killing their intimate partners and led Australia's first Royal Commission into family violence in Victoria, making 227 recommendations. Marcy and Eve, welcome to Stateline. Thank you so much, Tam, for having me. When your Royal Commission handed down its report in 2016, we were looking at a system in a state of crisis. How would you describe it now? I'd say it's improved substantially, but there's still lots more work to be done. And I think one of the things that's happened as a result of the improvements that have been made is that more people are coming forward and seeking help, and that in itself puts more demand on the system. It's a system that's been bursting at the seams, not just for years, but for generations. Laws must be enacted now. This year alone in Victoria, we've had Samantha Murphy, Rebecca Young, Sweater Madagani, Hannah Maguire and Emma Bates. When news of another death breaks, how does that affect you personally? Well, I find it terribly distressing. And, you know, I, I think probably the fact that I've worked in this area for a long period of time has meant that I'm a bit more distrustful than I used to be. In my lifetime, probably had at least three or four friends who've experienced some form of family violence, fortunately, not as severe as what happened in those cases. And I think about what could I have done to help them better. Was that Royal Commission a success? I would be hesitant to claim that anything is a complete success because I think change, social change, and producing better social policies takes a long time. It's How a long? very, very gradual process. If you look back historically, all of the big changes that have happened in society have taken 20, 30, 40 years. Is that really the length of time? It's almost a generational length of time. One thing I would say about family violence, it's often described as a wicked problem. And by wicked, it means that there's all of these constellations, different systems that apply. And I think wicked problems take longer to resolve because you've got to get all the bits of the system working together. Do you have any thoughts or feelings around what you would have done differently? We recommended that somebody be appointed for a period of time to look at the recommendations and how the recommendations were being implemented and then report to Parliament, which means that the improvements and the failures are in the public domain and then people can bring to bear pressure on the areas that need fixing. And one of the things that I'm a bit disappointed about is that the implementation monitor has ceased her job. The state government says it's implemented all 277 yes, <laughs> recommendations. What do you think about that? Well, I think I don't agree with that proposition. Um, sometimes I think that the response is a bit simplistic. Um, and that's why you need the implementation monitors. It seems with every death, it hurts even more. What message would you give to the women of Australia? Be informed, try to understand when the, if there are dangerous um, signs in a relationship. Have a plan almost from the beginning. No one, no one wants to think about this when they're in love, when they're forming a new relationship. No one wants to contemplate the possibility that this might happen, but I think being able to recognise those early warning symptoms and to think about what you do about that, what sort of conversations you have about that, and, and how to draw a line about what behaviour is acceptable and unacceptable is pretty important. Is it possible to turn this 
ship around. I think ch cultural change is possible. And I, I have some hope for young people who have heard a lot about this issue, and I will tell you another story in that context. There's a school that set up a program on respectful relationships and the kids went to that program and one of the boys went to the teacher who was responsible for the program and said, do you think I could bring my mum and dad along because I think they really need it? Marcy and Eve, it's been such a treat to talk to you. Thank you for talking with Stateline. Thanks. <laughs>